All right, welcome back to How Made the Show, where you see how Michael made the things that were made. This episode, we're going to talk about a really good thing that was made recently, and that's BFB7. This is a scene that a lot of people have been talking about. People have been asking, how was this made? And that's a really good question. How was it made? Well, I think we can see here that it's not going to be made for much longer. You know, this is a sad time. We've got, we've reached the end of our rope here, you know. The end of our trial has already come. And, you know, it's been a long and fun road, but it's got to come to an end. This is going to be our last trial launch. And that's a sad but unfortunate truth. All right, let's jump right into it. This is the scene that everybody loves. You see it, you smile instantly. This is, it's got the colors that pop right into your eyes. It's got the 3D movement. You can see, an, you can see we've got the After Effects camera movement here, and that's with the 3D camera and After Effects. And I have to tell you, I'm a real beginner at After Effects. I do not know what I'm doing when I do the things that I do. But if I do it for long enough, eventually they come out looking all right. I think there's a way to split it into two views. Yeah, there we go. So you can see the movement of the camera. It starts out further away and then it gets closer. All right, that's something that we like. But what's the most interesting part of this? You tell me. Come on, go ahead. That's right, it's the nodes. It's the little moving dots in the back, you know, with the lines connecting them. We've actually got two instances of this. We've got the grid, the 3D grid here. Then we've also got these circles. Those are two things that really make the scene look the way it does. And I have to say, this is a plugin that I really like. I've really admired some of the things that people have used it to make. It's called Yanobox Nodes, and it's something that I really wanted to try for a long time, but it's Mac only, and that's a real bummer. So for the longest time, I didn't have a Mac, but now I do. So now I can use it. Feels good. All right, if we can find it, there we go, Radial Grid. I think this is... Yeah, that's it. So let's see if we can like mess around with some of the settings to see what makes this thing look the way it does. And I think the most important part of this effect here is the, is the projection. It starts out as kind of a grid. Let's see if we can sort of look around orbit, see if we can find the thing that we're looking for in its raw form. Is it even here? No, I think I'm seeing something over there. I think that's one of the one of the things that really makes it hard to work is if you've got a really laggy environment. If it like takes too long, then it's really impossible to do anything. But I think that goes without saying. Now, I think something's messing this up here, but if it weren't doing the messing up thing that it is, you would be seeing that it's really just starts out as a grid. It looks kind of like a crossword puzzle almost. It's just a bunch of squares. You've got a bunch of points lined up together sort of in a ladder formation, but also in different directions, but they're like orthogonal directions. So it looks like a crossword. But then I apply this effect at the end. And apologies if you're watching this on a small screen, you know, I got to do this on a big screen. You know, I got to see all the big things and I'm not going to be editing this to like zoom in. So. If you're on a small screen, you're just gonna have to follow along and pretend, pretend that you can see what I'm talking about. That's unfortunate, but it's true. Then I think if we go to effects projection and you can set what shape these coordinates are suddenly going to be transformed into. So we started out with a completely Eulerian, is that the right word? I don't remember, but we we're now turning into a spherical coordinate system. So now. All these points get mapped into a sphere. And then I wish there were a way to make it like 3D because right now it's just the surface of a sphere. If you could somehow have like a Z where it's like toward and away from the center of the sphere, that would be really great. But thankfully we don't really need it here because we just got a flat sphere and whatever uh, exists just gets smashed onto the surface of that sphere. And so now Previously, the checkerboard or the crossword was just like moving up and down. Now, with this projection going on, these, these nodes, instead of going up and down, they're going sort of in the latitude direction. I got the right word there. You know, it's easy. It's like a ladder, latitude. 
So these ladders are just going up and down. And it took me a while. At first, when I was first making this, I wanted to make it so that the nodes disappeared when they got to the top. But that was just way too hard. So they go through the top. And, you know, it's like, it makes sense. You know, it's easy. It's like a balance between easy for me and easy for the viewer. Because it's like, you could say that it's real. You know, you could say that it's like, it's like data transfer. You know, it's a communication thing. Robot Flower is talking to remote and remote's like responding back with some information of some sort. So, you know, I guess maybe that's a lesson to learn is that sometimes whatever is a little easier, even if it's not what you originally imagined, you can still kind of justify it either way. So there we go. That's fun. Now, what other things do we have here? Well, the one thing I like about this nose plugin is that they've got all the parameters very well organized. You know, you and also kind of from top to bottom too. So they've got them very well sorted out. You start with the well, no, no, they're not from top to bottom, but either way you start with the form and that's like the shape, the place where the, how the nodes are made, where they are, like where they're placed. And in this case, it's from some sort of arbitrary image. I don't know where it gets it, but you know, I just use a preset and then just changed it up. So it comes from an image of some sort. It's creating them based on the brightness of that image at a certain point. You, know, you give it a resolution and so that that changes how many nodes you have so that's way too many nodes if you have four times as many as usual you bring it down you get fewer nodes and you also see there are fewer lines too and that's because of the connections tab you twirl that down you can see you get options on how to set which nodes are connected to which nodes and in this case it's based on distance it's like yeah just whatever nodes are dynamically close or far away from other nodes it makes a connection to it. And I'm actually kind of surprised that it's made a grid pattern as neat as it is, because I've also got a different thing that's kind of displacing these nodes a bit. Cause you can see some of these things going on here. You've got nodes that aren't connected at all in a sort of random way. And I think that's because of the transform. No, it's because of the oscillator thing, the oscillator tab, we've got a little noise oscillation. If we increase the amplitude, you can see, whoa, I should have put that in the video. That, that's actually something I should have used. It looks really cool. I mean, come on. I missed out on something really great here. This is, you know, this is almost like a hit to my heart. You know, I'm a little sad we didn't get to see this really cool thing going on here, but yeah, now it's just a little wavy. So I thought I would add like a little wavy effect, you know, make it a little, look a little more magical. Couldn't really decide, you know, I want it to look kind of technological, but also a little mystical too. So we got these nodes kind of waving around in a random way. And I'm actually really thankful that it's as easy to control the noise as it is here, because, you know, sometimes it's hard to control, like how many octaves, how fast is this thing going to wave? How large are the waves going to be, you know, but here it's just like automatically it looks good. So I'm already satisfied. And I think if you go to the animation tab, you can actually sort of you can specify what parameters are being increased at a certain time and you don't have to create any keyframes. It's just like, I want some movement here. So I'll just set this property to move. And then you don't have to worry about like putting down keyframes. You don't have to worry about making it so After Effects like extrapolates it to the rest of time. It's just automatically like that. And that's so good. That makes me happy. So oscillator.evolution, that's the property here. And you can see we've got a speed of 10, so it's increasing. And by evolution, it just means that just like the movement is going on. And so if we increase this like 10 times, you're not going to see any difference in a single shot, but you are going to see that this thing is going to wobble 10 times faster. And then we've also got this other thing here, effects.projection.latitude. See, I got the right word there. And that's increasing at five. So. Those are two things that are already being animated and you can see those being animated in the final cut. And then let's see what else is going on here. Well, we've got, I think the most important thing that also really defines the look of this is this adjustment layer. And I just heard about adjustment layers, like not long before I made this. So I thought, Hey, I should use this. And I used it to like set like how this thing looks in terms of color, because originally it was like really garish. It was like pink and blue. It was like, pink at the top and blue at the bottom. It looked like it's like something out of My Little Pony, you know, which, you know, it's a good aesthetic, but it's not really what I'm looking for because I want something that's like 
whoa, it's like a blockbuster. Whoa, it's got such a limited palette. So I use this to make it look a little bit less like this, a little bit more like this. And, you know, it's really easy to sort of talk about the trendy color grading effects and how it's all orange and teal. And it's like, it all looks the same, but you know, it's, it's all about, it also gives it a sense of control. It gives it a sense of structure. And once you have those things dialed back, you, all the things that are bright and colorful really pop out. And that's, I think the great thing about the strength of this trend. And that's fun. And I've got two different things going on here. What if I disable this one? Okay, so this one just makes it brighter again. Oh, I think the thing that really does the color grady effect is the tritone. So like, I don't know what I'm doing, but you know, if I just mess with it enough, it comes out looking great. So I'm, once again, I'm happy and that's all that matters. What else is going on here? We've got robot flower. That's a 3D layer. I think if I make it not a 3D layer, yeah, and it just, oh wow, you threw away my, threw away my animation. Okay, there we go. What else is going on here? Wool cloud. This was something that I thought I would add at some point, but I didn't really find a place to put it that like seemed appropriate. So I had this other instance of nodes and it was a sort of bright teal, bright, bright cyan thing. How does it look without the adjustment layer? It looks like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Another reason I wanted to add this, these adjustment layers on top is because I think, I don't know much about the color space or whatever, but this was something like the, the colors would clip to white or they would clip to yellow or teal, you know, just two, five, you know, completely 255 and it looked really digital and kind of ugly. I, once I applied this tritone effect, it really looks a little more filmic, you know, that's another trendy thing you want it to look like. You want it to look like a movie, of course. And it makes it so that colors don't immediately like go poof, hit the ceiling and become this garish, very digital looking thing. It sort of looks kind of like film where it'll, it'll just sort of gradually ease toward white and it'll actually become a little bit less saturated. And I thought this kind of gave that same impression. So once again, if you just try different things and have fun with it, then you will eventually find something you're satisfied with. Once again, without the adjustment layer, it's really bright and it's a lot more exciting, but it also uh, is lacking in restraint. And that is something that we're going to wait for this to finish auto saving. That's something that I think this thing adds. Going back to what else is here. I think the thing that really sets the tone, aside from the other three things that I also said set the tone are the uh, stock footage that I put in here. It's just the background because without these, it looks really empty and I wasn't really sure how to add a sense of light, you know, give it something that ties the composition together, you know, gives you a central focal point to look at and the light really gives it a sense of atmosphere. If we remove the adjustment layers, I think I didn't do anything to the stock footage and you can see how they actually looked. So there's that. If I double click on it, I think you can see that this is what we're looking at here. This is just, just light leaks you know if you add enough of them it'll look cool period end of story all right moving on to the next one i think this this is one of the last ones that i did and as much as i'd like to say that i animated this you know this whole super cool sci-fi thing i did all these scenes in like one day i started them on i think like what is it like maybe 1 p.m. on Thursday and finish them at 4 a.m. on Friday and then the episode's supposed to come out on Friday so it's really all about prioritizing you know as much as I'd like to do this all by myself and to be super proud of it I also got to put out a product so you can see I'm using a lot of stock footage or a lot of pre-made assets and if you I guess if you want to try to make it yourself there's always that risk of you being able to be proud of that product, but the product isn't really as good as it could be. So in this case, I'm kind of playing to the strength of a professional, you know, someone who actually has been doing this sort of fake UI stuff for a long time. And if I just, you know, pay for a product and support them, I think that's actually a good thing. So this 
animation here is not made by me. Where is it? If I can find it, that'll be really good. Unstable connection. So there's that. It's super laggy. If I think I, if I click somewhere, it's gonna like take a long time. It's gonna freeze for a little while. And look at all those things. There's so many things going on. You know, I think it would just be kind of a a waste of time to try to learn how to do this in the time it takes to make an episode. And having this being already made, I think is something that is has really helped create the product. And that's all that matters. And then there we there we have this. It's like this dumb little joke. Excessive package droppings, gross but true. I, this really wasn't meant to be like as big as it is. Like originally this thing was a lot smaller. Like it was down there, but it was hard to read the words unstable connection. So I just made it bigger. And, and now this thing is in the spotlight. Either way, you know. Oh well, you know, it's a joke that I made and it got seen. So it's pretty good. Stable connection, all right. So that's going on. Is there anything else to talk about in this thing that's different? I think one thing I did was I added a little, some dark blobs that would make it a little easier to read. So without them, you know, you got that shine in the background, it's hard to read. So I have these sort of masks. This is a solid, I think. It's a solid with a mask applied to it and that mask has a feather. Can we look at this on its own? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So this mask is like bluish, but it makes some, a very unbluish effect because we've got the blend mode set to subtract, which means it's like the opposite of blue. It's removing blueness. This is like almost getting into like chlorophyll, how chlorophyll is green because it's the only color that it rejects. If we change the color of this mask, is it control shift, command shift Y? Yeah. We change this like to something super red. You can see it becomes like cyan because that's the opposite. It's removing all the red. It's subtracting red from whatever's behind it. If we make it green, it becomes pink. So that's that. And I made it that color just because I think if I made it like just a grayscale thing, it would just look like you made it darker. And this making it this color matched the color scheme of this scene better. And that's how that ended up. Is there anything else here? No. Okay, so these compositions are all kind of variations of each other. Will die. Okay, this is the scene where Robot Flower is now discovering that that remote is doing something. And this panel here, this really cool thing building up, unfortunately, was also not made by me. But I did sort of mess with it enough that I can say that I had a little hand in it. Can I find it? Text. Interface. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I like this one because it's 3D. This is made by someone else. I should put links to them, but yeah, well, you can look in the description and see if I've done that. Yeah. And yeah, so we've got the two views here. We've got on the left side, we've got side view, right side, we've got front view. I did not have any part in this. This is just, I guess, whoever made it uh, did that because it was helpful for them to make it. If we turn up the resolution, which we're going to have to do, there we go. Eight ball will die. Basketball will die. It took a lot of, it was pretty tedious to try to synchronize these up because we've got, we're inside this composition here, but the audio is out there. So we kind of have to bounce back and forth to see if it's, is it synced up? Is it not? Yeah. And what else is going on here? So those are all lined up and then we have this text on the right and I didn't really know what to do there. So I just filled it up with the rest of the other people. That's that. Nothing else done there. Oh, and one thing I did with these different displays, and this here is also pre-made, made by someone else, but I did modify it. But these two things here, one thing I wanted to do to give them a little bit of depth is I have them duplicated. So not only is there, not only is there a white version, there's also a black version behind it too. So we've got a little bit of almost a drop shadow, but also kind of like, like a glass pane. And one thing that I liked that I was inspired by, if I can say inspired, because I didn't really do as much as what they did in Ender's Game, which was they, you know, you know, spent a long time making everything by themselves. You know, it's obviously, you know, a much mass, more massive production. And to say that I was inspired by this is kind of, I don't know, it's almost like, I'm not even going to compare myself to this because this, because uh, yeah, what they did in there is really, really cool. And I think if you just Google Ender's Game Ash Thorpe, 
you can see like some of the super cool stuff that happened there. And this is just my attempt at trying to emulate it. And what they did there was they, yeah, had a glass pane effect where they duplicated it. And that's what's going on here. But what they did was they had the same thing, just like white text and then more white text. And it looked kind of like doubling, like if you're looking at a mirror. And in here, I decided to make it black because that probably just makes it easier to read. So that's that. We've got these two things. This composition here being in 3D made it really cool because we've got a 3D camera. So as the camera moves around, you can really see the depth going on. And the bomb, I want to talk about the bomb. So if I can find the composition with that. Downloading bomb. Have you noticed that these scenes are all in order despite them being alphabetically organized? You can see I've kind of contorted the names a bit. So like in the beginning, Flower says, where am I? And here I've named it, am I where? Because it's the first scene, so it's got to start with an A, of course. Yeah, smart. And this bomb here, this bomb was a 3D model I made. And that's something that I like about Yenobox nodes is that you can import an OBJ and use those, uh, use the 3D model to specify where the positions of the nodes are. And that's fun. So you can sort of put whatever you want in 3D. And then you can also morph it to a different shape. And someone tweeted at me about that. And I'm glad they noticed that. And that was really rewarding to see that happen. Downloading bomb, all right. And I've animated the speed. So now that animation property in the Animbox nodes that we talked about earlier, you can animate it. So now it begins not moving, then it becomes moving. Yeah. All right, what else is there to talk about? Anything going on here? Oh yeah, the very last scene where the stuff is all yoinked back up. Starts with a Y, because that's at the end of the alphabet. Everything's yoinked back up. We've got the bomb uh, having an effect applied to it or having some sort of displacement if I can find the comp if I can find the layer. So we've got an oscillator, a noise oscillator, having the amplitude being animated. And so as that value that the amplitude, the amplitude value increases, the bomb goes up. And that's how that's done. A similar thing happens to the the nodes in the background, that sort of sphere, and also just everything else really. And then on top of that, I have the adjustment layer having the CC flow motion effect to give it a little, a little glorping going on, a little distortion, screen space distortion. Is this the right layer? I'm disabling it, nothing's happening. Oh, I know what it is. So that's like a secondary effect I have on top. But the downloading bomb effect with the ring around it too is also having its own effect applied to it. If I can find that. Dark behind bomb. There's the bomb. Oh yeah, I forgot to, I think this is a little goof is that I forgot to put the second layer behind that. So in the final version, you see that even though that's a mistake. Mess, bomb, white, mess, short for message. And you can see this thing is being distorted. With a little position here, we can change. We can, hey, let's let's go into the D, huh? And there we go, it's, it's all going into there. And yeah, it's just crazy how many different things are just built into After Effects. Like, just being able to play with these is really something that I love to do. Unfortunately, I can't because my trial's over. Uh. What else is there? Wow, press two, yeah. All right, it took me a while to find one of the pre-made assets for the button because I was like, I want to find something that looks like a button, but apparently in space there are no buttons. So I used like this sort of HUD looking reticle thing, you know, something that's that's just like made for like looking down a site or like locked onto this and hey, it looks like a button. So I made it into a button, close connection, yeah. And I kind of got lucky that uh, these four triangles light up right as the sound effect goes on because that totally was not intentional, but it matches up and that was just a happy accident. All right, moving on, trying to find other things. Oh yeah, the depth of field effect. That's something that Yanobox knows does not have built in. Hey, the background's not blurred. Oh, that's a little goof there. The front is blurred, the back is blurred. 
The very back, it's not blurred. So that's the, another little goof for you to add to the wiki article, you know, if that's what you're into. Okay. And I think one of these might be blurred just with a blur effect that I applied myself. Yeah, is it here? Fast box blur, yeah. I wanted the front to be a little more blurry than it already was. Yeah, there we go. So that's how it looks with the built-in After Effects camera depth of field effect there. Double click on the camera, you get a cool little diagram. And depth of field is a checkbox. There we go, enable depth of field. If I could zoom into this, I totally would. I'm sorry that everything's so tiny because I've got a big screen. Ooh. But no, that's how it is. Focus distance, that gets animated. So we get a little movement going on there. It starts out focused on robot flower and then moves to the back. That's that. We'll die at number three. So this is probably the messiest looking camera movement we have here, aside from the very first scene. One thing I really wanted to avoid was the sort of, sort of, I don't know, like amateur person using a graph to an animate a camera look. You know, you can see it from a mile away. It's something that's like the camera's kind of awkwardly kind of smoothly moving sometimes and sharply moving at other times. And it really looks like you sort of animated it by placing keyframes. And it took me a while to kind of remove that as much as I could from this scene, but this scene was really dripping in it earlier. All right, and this one, I think it was really hard to kind of find a good starting point and a good ending point because uh, I think I actually like moved around robot flower and the button and the background thing a lot. So it's not even like I cheated and I didn't even get a good result. So you know what? It's good enough for me. All right, I think that's that with the with all the different scenes. I think I've talked about everything original in this composition that I wanted to. So I think that's the end of it. Yay. New How Made episode, done.